Why does the Pixel 3a have a headphone jack and what does it say about the hypocrisy, cluelessness, and uh, maybe even classism of the tech industry? Hey there friends on YouTube, my name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL, this is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts if this is your first time here. Thank you so much for stopping by, I hope you'll come back again, and if you've been here before, you guys know I love you. I really, really do, so thank you for being here. Okay, so now let's just get to the point at hand. A lot of us were early to praise Google for putting a headphone jack back into the new Pixel 3a. I have long complained that first Apple and later most of the rest of the smartphone manufacturers removed the port in the first place for a very specific reason, to sell more headphones. Not to be courageous or because wireless offers improved sound over wired, which we all know it doesn't and it won't, for quite a while. As soon as Apple released the AirPods, right after removing the headphone jack from the iPhone 7, the sales of wireless headphones, for the first time, surpassed wired. Wonder, how's that work? Now, I get it, I get it. Business is business, and if you can find a way to make more money selling the same product, plus a solution to a product you created, <laughs> more power to you. But you can't have it both ways. And that's where Google has opened up a huge window for us to see into the hypocrisy, cluelessness, and classism with their talking points around the return of the headphone jack on the 3A. As I said, many, including myself, were happy to see the headphone jack return, but it wasn't until I heard an interview with Google product manager Sonia Jobanputra, who said Google wanted to include the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack because a lot of people have headphones. Yeah. <laughs> on its face. This is, uh, this is at best an obtuse comment. Of course people have headphones. But Job and Putra did not stop there. No matter how obtuse the previous statement, it was nothing. It compared not at all to when Job and Putra went on to say, at this price point and this price tier, customers really need flexibility. Ding, ding, ding! That right there reveals what kind of cluelessness the latest hypocrites exist in the hallowed halls of our beloved tech company. Because I mean, they're not alone. They're not alone. There are plenty, there's plenty of that to go around in this world today. But Job and Putra put voice to what we have always probably understood somewhere in the back of our mind and she didn't even realize, it seems, that she was doing it. In fact, her comments were very clearly prepared talking points that she dutifully parroted back when asked about the headphone jack. So I'm not placing the entire blame on her. I, it's not just about that. The entire tech industry gets credit for this. Let's take a second to break down these comments so we can truly understand the messaging being deployed behind the subtext of these statements. First, we have the, a lot of people have headphones line, to which we can only reply, yeah, no duh, but that didn't matter when you removed the headphone jack in the first place, did it? Why? As mentioned before, it's better to sell two products when before you could only sell one, but this is the kind of bald-faced hypocrisy that just feels like Google, and by extension, a lot of the phone manufacturers out there are really just whizzing in our cornflakes and telling us it's milk. But the true impact of what she means by this statement comes when she extends the thought and says, at this price point and this price tier, customers really need flexibility. How can we translate this from marketing speak into language we can all understand? How about this? Uh, poor people can't afford wireless headphones, which isn't necessarily true, but that seems to be one of the implications. Or People who don't want to pay $1,000 for a phone are also probably too frugal to buy wireless headphones. Or how about this one? We just want to score quick points for acting like we're class conscious. To be clear, $400 isn't cheap, but insinuating that by bringing the headphone jack back is in some way a concession who those who can't or won't use wireless headphones is at best condescending and clueless. At worst, it's classism that betrays how these companies really operate and what they really think about the different demographics they hope to sell to. Finally, Job and Putra said bringing back the headphone jack on their budget phone was an effort to not create any more e-waste. Funny, that was never a concern when selling phones at a higher price point and taking away the headphone jack. You can either be conscious about your environmental footprint as a company and act accordingly on all levels of your product lines, or you can be a hypocrite. If Google's going to claim e-waste consciousness as reasoning behind the design of this product, 
they better bring the headphone jack back on the Pixel 4 or they're just talking out of their rear ends. The Pixel 3a was definitely a move toward the middle of the market and it's definitely a good phone that makes the right concessions to reach its price point. It puts a great camera in the hands of a market segment that didn't have a ton of options before this phone existed. But Google and the rest of the smartphone industry need to do some uh, soul searching if they actually want to live up to what they're spinning in their marketing speak. I mean, of course, I know they don't want to live up to any of these words. This is one marketing soundbite for a product that will lose its shine once the next product launches, which means, I guess, that it probably already has since the OnePlus 7 Pro launched last week. Uh, but who am I kidding? Google, Apple, all the rest of them, they have no soul to search. They're companies. They're always looking for the best angle to sell what they're selling. Google just happened to step in a steaming pile of hypocrisy and classism this time when trying to take credit for being a thoughtful company that cares about its customers and the world around them. That's the irony. Whoever wrote that marketing language thought they were saying the right things. They had no idea how bad saying those things would make them look if someone actually took the time to think about what they were saying. I guess the lesson here is no company cares about you. No company cares about the world. They care about selling more products. You are the target of their marketing manipulation. I mean, marketing strategy. It's important when listening to them that you hear what they're saying instead of what they want you to hear. Caveat emptor, people. Caveat emptor.